Hi there, welcome back to California Carnivores. I'm Damon and today we're gonna to talk about one of my very favorite subjects and a subject that we get tons of questions about because it is highly technical, slightly advanced, but it's growing carnivorous plants from seeds. That's probably my favorite thing to do in the entire world. I tell everyone that I come back to this reality over and over again, lifetime after a lifetime, just to play that game. Because when you grow new plants from seeds, you actually you actually don't know what you're gonna get. Like that box of chocolates in Forrest Gump, you have no idea what you're gonna get. And all the really cool brand new cultivars that we make here started off once as a seed. Um, like I said, this is a somewhat advanced and technical topic, and so it's going to be a whole series of videos. We're going to try and cover all the carnivorous plants and answer all of your questions, but there'd be no way to do that in one video. Uh, so we're going to do that in several. Now, I started growing carnivorous plants from seed probably almost 30 years ago now, when I was about 12 years old. My first Cape Sundew that I got from Peter made little Cape Sundew seeds, tiny, like tiny black dust that first summer, and Peter showed me how to sprinkle them on top of pots and make new Cape Sundews. So fun! And I still remember to this day going back and checking with a magnifying glass to look for those little baby sundews popping up. And what's really fun about them is you get to see them from the very, very beginning of their life cycle. And all carnivorous plants have two little sprout leaves or cotyledons, botanists call those cotyledons. Um, but then their very next first leaf is actually a functional trap. So baby tiny sundews have a little baby sundew leaf and little tiny fly traps actually have a tiny, tiny little functional trap. They can barely catch anything, but it's just so fun to see. Now, carnivorous plants can be slow from seed. It's not like growing basil or tomatoes. It's not gonna be done this first summer. Maybe with Cape Sundays, you could get a nice little plant in a few months, but the, for the most part, this is a longer process. This is for the patient persnickities. So if you're not that patient and you're not that persnickety and you're just trying to save some money and buy some cheap seeds, this is probably not for you. Seed growing is really for people who are really deep into horticulture for the most part. And I would recommend if you're just trying to start out for the very first time, just spend the $10 and buy a flytrap because it might take you as long as seven to eight years to grow a $10 Venus flytrap from seeds. So again, patient and persnickety. Now the persnickety part is, you know, you wanna have everything set up as best as humanly possible before you even start. Planting the seeds is gonna be the very last part of this. Um, we're actually probably not gonna touch that in this video, um, but that's actually the smallest part. Planting the seeds is the smallest part. Getting the setup right is the most important thing. And this is another one of those situations where an ounce of preparation is worth a pound of cure. Problems that might pop up later down the road because we're slapdash now will be really hard to fix once those plants start to sprout. But right now, in the beginning, we have a lot of control, we have a lot of time, and we wanna take that to make sure that um, we've done everything right straight from the beginning. Now, we all know there are different kinds of seeds and there are different specialness to that seeds. Not all seeds are created equal. So, you know, if you're just trying some open pollinated Saracenia seeds that happen to germinate uh, or happen to um, get pollinated and form up on your plant over the summer and you just wanna see what it'd be like to grow some seeds, you might not need to do every single step that we're gonna talk about here. But if you bought a really fancy pack of seeds for like $60 and there's only 20 of them in there and you really, really want these to grow, you're gonna wanna do every step that we talk about in these videos. So make sure you go through and watch all of my videos before you even start. Um, one of those videos is gonna be on soil sterilization. That's a good first step, um, but not necessary. Again, if I was just doing some general seeds I didn't care that much about, I might not sterilize the soil, but I would do it if I really cared about it. Some seeds will, will require stratification, which is a period of being cold and wet. So some seeds have a special lock in order to germinate. And so we'll do separate videos on those to talk about some of those other things that you might have to do for more specific seeds. Today, I mostly wanna talk about when to plant them and how to set things up, how to get started. So 
When is such an important question. If you plant seeds at the wrong time of year, that is a guaranteed way to certainly run into problems, but probably fail altogether. Sowing seeds is not a your schedule thing, it's a plant schedule thing. I always talk about this, but with plants, you wanna follow their lead, not yours. If you bought some seeds and you're so excited to sprout them, like maybe you bought some Venus flytrap seeds over the summer and you really wanted to sow those in the fall, um, you could do that if you did them under grow lights, but if you just wanna do that under regular light, um, that's gonna probably run into problems. You're, they're just gonna sit and get mossy before they even have a chance to grow. That'll be problems, problems, problems. So you really wanna pick the right time of year. And for most, uh, most plants, the best time of, to plant seeds is in the spring. We will later talk about a group of plants that's good to plant them in the fall. That's gonna be like tuberous sundews and dewy pines and things that grow in Mediterranean climates where they grow mostly over their wet, mild winters. Usually we'd sow those in the fall. But for the most part, spring is what you're shooting for. Now, um, seeds that require stratification, that's a six week process. And so we do wanna, we do wanna um, sow those seeds a little bit sooner than say a Cape sundew seed. Um, anyways, so what we're shooting for is to line up with the spring. So we're in mid-January right now, which is a really great time to start planting seeds of temperate carnivorous plants like Venus flytraps, American pitcher plants, temperate sundews, and butterworts. That is a really great time to get them all set up so they can stratify for six weeks or so, and then be ready to sprout, say like around March, just as spring is opening up, because spring is the best time to be a temperate plant. Things are perfect, it's not too hot, the light isn't so intense. Um, later in the summer, it's gonna be really intense, really hot. You could do it, you know, but you might run into more problems. So much of this is hedging off problems, you know? So, basically, for the most part, you're gonna start around mid-January to mid-February is a pretty good time. There are other tricks to get around it if you got a little bit too late or a little bit too early. We can talk about that later, but right about now is probably the best time to get them planted, especially if you want to stratify with the natural cold. Um, I've got everything all set up here, mostly. Um, so now we have to talk about, you know, what pots are we going to use, the kind of physical, physicality of doing this. Most most carnivorous plants, temperate carnivorous plants, are really happy to be sown in the, in the mix that they already grow in, which is about four to five parts peat moss to one part perlite. Um, as always, you could also use equal parts peat and washed horticultural sand. Um, both those mixes are pretty much created equal. And I've already filled all, uh, most of my pots here. I'll show you filling the last one in a second here. Clean, cleanliness is important. Um, most of us with COVID have all learned to be a little bit more persnickety and a little bit more uh, careful. You wanna use all those skills um, that you've learned over COVID and apply that to seeds. The less other stuff that gets in here, the, the fewer problems you will have later down the road. And so I like to use really clean new pots. You know, we have a lot of old gross pots laying around like this, but all that stuff, there's fungal spores, moss spores, that's all potential problems. So I like to start off with a nice clean pot. Save your gross pots for big plants. Big plants can take a lot. What we're trying to make are tiny, tiny little plants and they are not forgiving. If it gets a little too dry, anything happens to a tiny, tiny carnivorous plant sprout, they will die. And they're going to be sprouts for a long time, like I said. You know, your baby Venus flytrap may only get like, you know, that big over the first year. So it's gonna be years in this little pot. That's why the setup is so important. Um, a good thing to put them in, you can put them into a Tupperware bin like this. I'm gonna put the uh, lid on there and lock it all down and that'll keep things like fungus gnats and other spores, rain, anything from getting in there that might wreck it. Um, if you don't wanna do something like so big, you can get a smaller Tupperware, but another thing, just in horticultural supplies that you see a lot of, is you see a lot of these trays, and you see a lot of these plastic domes. So if you're just gonna do a few seeds, a setup like this is really nice. And I do like these specific pots because they're very rigid, and 
18 of them fit perfectly into one of these flats. And the flat has no holes, so they can sit in water. And high humidity is really important when you're sowing seeds. And so once we get them all planted, we're gonna put a dome like that on top to keep the humidity up and keep it protected. So a Tupperware bin like this is good, and they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Or if you already have some stuff like this, this is really good. Be careful though. One of the benefits about this is it's a solid level lid and the rain will absolutely knock it in there. On this guy, almost all of these um, translucent domes have a little adjuster on here. And those are nice, but when it rains, it's gonna fill up into that indentation, drip around the sides. And if you had it out in the rain, that pot and that pot of seeds will probably get ruined. When they're so tiny, even a, a trickle of water can totally destroy everything you've done. Um, most of the things that I'm gonna talk about are wisdom that was hard fought. These are mistakes that happened to me when I was like 15, 16. We still make mistakes or every now and then, and then we learn from those. And so um, that's something that's happened to me a lot where I thought everything was safe and the rain creep, creeped in and dripped on there. We'll usually um, cover the whole thing in plastic if we put it outside, or you can also just um, put some saran wrap on top and that's pretty good at keeping it out. Um, don't let good be the enemy of perfect. You know, if you want to grow some carnivorous plant seeds, work with what you have, but I'm here trying to show you what perfect looks like. Pot size is an interesting thing to talk about too, because, you know, how big of a pot should you use for these seeds that you have? A little pot like this is perfect for probably 20, maybe even 50 seeds, certainly 10 little seeds, will do really nicely in a small pot like that. Um, and, you know, you could put it in a bigger pot, but bigger pots are more room for more problems, take up more space, and so it doesn't make a lot of sense to put 10 seeds in something huge like this. It's just gonna be kind of a waste of resources. So a nice little pot like that is great. And a pot like this, believe it or not, you could put 100 to 200 seeds in that, no problem. So most of you probably don't need a pot bigger than this of anything. Like if we do a whole pot of this of Saracenia, that'll usually end up being like five flats of 32 plants, which is more than most of you need. So you're probably not gonna need huge pots for this process. Um, then you want it to be really nice. You wanna use good high quality peat moss. Like we would never reuse soil here anyways, but no reusing soil, that's gonna have old problems in it. Make sure you buy good peat moss. Um, we really like the um, Black Gold or Sunshine brand. It's been a little harder to find lately with supply chain issues like everything else, but we really like those two brands. And miracle Grow, we always don't recommend because they add fertilizers in that can be harmful to our plants, especially baby plants. Little seedlings, that's a big, big no on that. Um, another pro tip, as you can see on all these, I've got the soils very firmly packed so it's not gonna settle. We always talk about that in all of our videos. If it's not firmly packed, it might settle down. And then I've also not filled it all the way to the top because later if I'm misting these seeds or maybe gently sprinkling them, it's good that they can't just be washed right off the top. This gives like a little lip that keeps the seeds from being washed away. Again, it's just a mistake that happened once and that's why I always do it that way now. Um, I think that's it. Oh, one other good tip is um, the chunky things in the mix, like the perlite, you'll sometimes end up with a big chunk of perlite on top. And I don't like that because if the seed lands on there, especially a small seedling, it's not going to make it. So I'll just kind of rub my hand across it like that. And you see, I got that big chunk out and then just go back in and kind of tap it back down, just like that. And just to show you from the start, I'll do the last one right in front of you guys. And this is all being done back in our workroom where the real magic happens here at California Carnivores. And although it is real magic, it is a dirty magic. And so you may have noticed it's a bit rough back here, but this is where we actually pot everything up. So I've lined the bottom of the pot with long fibered sphagnum. That's always a good idea to keep the soil from washing out the bottom of these holes. And then I'm just gonna fill it up really quick with this mix I already have here. This is four parts peat moss to one part perlite. It's the mix we use for almost everything and press it down in there really firm. Move it all around. And I kind of do the edges too. Make sure you get all the edges with your fingers, just like that. And then just tap it all down. 
And that didn't even end up with any big chunks of perlite on top. So it's pretty good. And then we're just gonna put it right in here for our last slot. So now we've talked about timing. We've got a good setup here. I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna cover in this video today. Um, be sure to check out all the rest of our videos. We're intending this to be a series, and so don't just watch this one, watch all of them, and uh, make sure you follow us so you can keep all of these videos coming.